And uh, yeah, I say hello. Hello, Maria. Hi, Simon. We are again, again after a long, long time. It feels like ages and centuries. We are back in the white room and it's very... It's uh, very... It's different than I imagined yeah. it, actually. <laughs> it's very different. It's blue and green. A lot of green and windy and sunny at the same time. It's actually really beautiful. It feels like... It feels like the first very good autumn day, which means summer is over. Actually, we're sitting on a play field, on a children's play field, next to our theater, Studio 7 Theater in Germany, in the little town Schwerte. And uh, we are surrounded by fields, because this is the landscape here, fields and some houses. Forest. Bourgeois neighborhood, very nice, uh, quiet place and uh, trees and the forest over there. And uh, yeah, I don't know if, 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 if I talked so much about it here, but we have a bar. Uh, um, our theater is situated, is, how do you say, beheimatet in German. It's, its home is in a bar or the bar is its home. So we work there when there is no, uh, in, one of the, uh, in one of the rooms. And, uh, but the bar is open and now it's a Sunday morning and uh, there are people uh, waiting for our uh, employee to come and uh, serve them uh, the traditional Frühschoppen which was, means uh, some nice beers <laughs> before before lunch German breakfast yeah before Woohoo. before lunch then they go to lunch and yeah it's it's just a very beautiful day and And I'm I'm happy. You will notice. I mean, now we we are also sitting together for the first time. We're sitting together for the first time. Um, we're, we're even sitting right across from each other. So, well, normally I don't see Simon at all, and I can do whatever I like, be dressed or not. But now <laughs> we are staring into each other's eyes. So let's see. <laughs> Yeah. What that Let's see what that means because I we we started I started this and we started this and I thought we should always come together but then there was uh, the pandemic and it, it is still the pandemic of course but and we could not meet but we decided we should start the podcast immediately and uh, yeah it was a we got used to talking over internet yeah and it's also good it works but it's now I feel very glad that that we that we finally here for the first time yeah we'll post a picture yeah on the on the website yeah yeah so um what's up simon yeah that's the question Maybe we had a three months almost break of the podcast only the podcast and i think that we started a lot of questions a lot of reflections together with our guests together with the people that we talked with that also then we experienced or experimented with in the summer months and are still going to mm -hmm. experiment and uh, yeah so what what have we been doing i think it's interesting that actually the moment that we stopped recording was exactly the moment when uh, the very strictest quarantine in our countries, Germany, Holland, Belgium, was ending. And, and you could feel that, uh, that the, the energy was shifting towards action. Now we were starting to think, uh, and this was in June, I guess, beginning of June, end of May, beginning of June. We were starting to think, okay, so now I can do things again, so what will I do? And it gives a very, uh, the, this peaceful, <laughs> or in a way peaceful thing of uh, not being able to move and therefore being in this very reflective state and being very much into all kinds of dialogues and, uh, and, and speaking together and writing. And now the energy was, was changing to action. 
Yeah, and I now uh, because you, we met not only for the podcast, of course. There was a lot of things going on. Maybe we can touch a little bit mm -hmm. this. So um, when we met uh, in February physically for a session in the Odin Theater, there was a new project that you brought up together with other colleagues uh, that you're organized in cross pollination, which is a research group or for uh, training and also theater production now. Um, And you started something which is called the Parliament of Practices. Yeah. And uh, we met in February and it was a very funny meeting, I thought, because there were a lot of people, uh, theater people and uh, also journalists, let's say, and academics. people academics, yes. And um, it was very nice. And then suddenly there was, of course, there was no movement possible. And what quickly came up was uh, an online, really a regular online meeting every week on Wednesday which was called the Parliament of Practices, where uh, where a lot of these people that met in February physically, but also new people came over Zoom, on Zoom, and uh, or on Jitsi, uh, and um, talked, no? And you talked about topics yeah. and you developed. Yeah. So tell, tell us about what happened. Yeah, it was exactly in that period that nobody could move and the uncertainty of uh, on what was going to happen or what was going on was huge and especially for practitioners of theater that are independent or any performing arts or in small groups or um, were feeling very isolated and I think uh, uh, that was the big motor behind uh, starting up the parliament now online is that we needed to reach out to each other in the very first case, just to affirm, we are here, we are still here. Uh, I'm still connected to you, even though we cannot even think of future projects or, or current projects. Everything is on hold. And it, it was uh, the Parliament of Practices is a project set up for the dialogue and the reflection between practices and about practices and very core aspect is that we speak from our practice so you position yourself as a practitioner in your practice and that's from how you you uh, exchange thoughts or reflections um, and but now when we when we started online there was a different need and first it was very emotional it was how are you now with your practice gone <laughs> mm, mm. and uh, I think the first three times was mainly about that yeah it was uh, I was there only um, in the first or second or the first three times I don't remember afterwards uh, our director was continuously participating Christoph and uh, but I remember very much that it was a very emotional meeting in the first uh, in the first moment no we, we were all just Literally, some crying and saying, "I uh, yeah. no now I all this different, not maybe also positive kind of uh, crying uh, or positive kind of reflection." Of course, also the uncertainty of the situation. People don't know the performers; they, we don't know how what is going on, how we can survive the next uh, period. Uh, but also, people were saying, "Now I have." I've been forced to have time to reflect on what I'm actually yeah. doing. And uh, yeah, we were speaking about this. What uh, what does it actually mean to 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 be an artist, to be a performer? And what does it mean to meet online and to talk about yeah. ourselves, our practice? Yeah. And uh, so there was a lot of... It was a, almost like a physical meeting because it, it was a lot of... It was a very... Yeah, you could use the word safe space also. Mm -hmm. It was a safe space yeah. for our egotistical need to to, to to express what we feel yeah. at the moment and share yeah. it with others who wanted to hear about it because yeah. they also were stuck at home. Exactly. You know? That was a very powerful thing. And, and also considering that for many people, uh, their direct colleagues were inaccessible in... in uh, And so some might not even have a partner or friends in the in the vicinity that will understand anything of this uh, of this loss and this grieving and this also the the turmoil 
uh, that it brings to have. So in that sense, uh, I think it was ve- very revealing. Mm-hmm. Also, this uh, this parliament it was revealing uh, how fragile our professional <laughs> lives uh, are built up, and. Uh, how easy it is to to lose the connection to what you feel in normal daily uh, practice to be so solid mm. but suddenly it's gone and uh some it it's also interesting that some of of the parliament uh are very used to digital communication and uh, and using the internet already for performances for many years and they insisted that this space is a hybrid space, uh, per definition, because you are present physically in your own space, and your own space is therefore present uh, in the digital space. Especially when you have a camera, it's very, very uh, uh, obvious, right? You s- you can look into each other's living rooms or <laughs> with some people they had to resort to the bathroom because that was the only quiet space <laughs> in the house full of kids because the kids could not go to school yeah. so <laughs> so that that brings uh, uh, an interesting aspect to are we re- how how are we physically together on the internet because we made a point of activating a lot of physical uh, presence mm. while uh, being on the Zoom together, yeah. doing uh, uh, warm-ups and uh, dance improvisations and, and having these very fluidly mixing with the uh, spoken exchanges. Yeah. So it created a strong uh, a strong space. And from then on, you you there was another thing that the two things that developed. Mm. We can touch maybe shortly. There was a group that formed out of this parliament. Uh, you were dedicated. You were dedicating yourself. It was like four or five people. Christoph, my director, was also uh, six, there. Six, six pe- people. Yeah. And you dedicated yourself to meet uh, every week or twice a week. And you, it was called embracing the unknown. Yeah. And another project that was coming up from that, which I remember now, it was the one thousand and one fires, which we talked in a previous episode, when it was just in the in the beginning of the idea. Yeah. Uh, the idea was you developed the idea that we should have this, uh, that there should be a day uh, to spread these 1001 fires. So you could talk maybe about these two things. Yeah. Wow. It sound, it feels very long uh, time ago, actually, funny enough, because so much has happened that these times have really shifted. So thinking back to to starting this project, Embracing the Unknown, it came from a Finnish uh, uh, director and actor called Tabani Mononen, who joined the parliament. Uh, uh, he's a completely new new member. He was not connected to, to anything. He came actually to join us through the European hackathon. That's another interesting yeah. phenomenon that appeared. Large gatherings of people that work together online in working groups, like big conferences, hackathons, or, yeah. And three people actually uh, uh, came to the parliament through that hackathon meeting. Um, And he was very honest in in relating and sharing how this crisis had broken him open, how it had helped him to see that he has to completely change his life. He's uh, uh, ha- had a studio in, in North Italy, a theater studio. And making that decision in, in, this, in the context of these uh, gatherings of the parliament, he was really showing his uh, uh, not knowing and his vulnerability in, mm. in just uh, accepting. Things have changed for me. I cannot go on. I will have to break and now what? So he was uh, putting this unknown future that we are all facing, but in that moment, even more than ever, almost all of us, really in the middle. 
and said, uh, I want to, to dive into this unknown, not trying to solve it, but exploring it. How do you gain access to that uh, place of not knowing? Mm. And what do our practices have to offer to us in that regard? Mm. Because a lot of the training of actors, dancers, musicians is about getting to that space of not knowing improvisation or building a character that did not exist before or a, a performance. And uh, and that is very simply what we what we start to do with six people coming from very different uh, backgrounds. Mm -hmm. An opera singer, a director, a dancer, a jazz singer, a tap dancer, which is me. And another director. And another director. Yeah. No, actually, the other one is a professor in intercultural studies. Ah, ah yeah. yes. Um, and we simply uh, said, every one of us shall lead a meeting mm -hmm. on the Zoom and offer the others an experience, guide the others into the unknown using uh, exercises from their own practice or insight from their own practice. Mm. And so we did these six uh, uh, sessions. And uh, what was, I think, most amazing is how effective it was in opening us to each other. <laughs> really fast and really uh, uh, deep trust was built and and real exploration that we all were able to go jump don't don't first put your toe in the water <laughs> and that, that was a strong experience and something uh, that now we are meeting here in Schwerte next week for the very first time in real, real life. physical life yes. and uh, and we are going to explore you know what what does this mean? How can we share it with people from outside the arts, maybe? Mm -hmm. How it might be one of these doors through which what we know as artists can help or, or feed a moment in, a, in social life. Mm. A gathering of people maybe trying these exercises and because we are all in need of to be able to face the unknown and not be s only scared of it mm. uh, or, or immobilized by it or blinded by it or so so you're going to meet here that's very that's very nice and we're going I think we're going also to to talk more about it it is a very intriguing title Embracing the Unknown mm. I like it very much and it speaks to a lot of things that we are going to touch also also today and mm -hmm. in this episode I think and uh, and then there was a you you developed this uh, thousand and one fires yeah. oh the fires <laughs> 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 yeah this is it actually worked out really fine so the invitation was uh when you are alone as an artist or in a very small group, you can make something. And sometimes it might feel like a very small fire. What is the point? But then knowing and, and reaching out to other fires creates this very uh, deep sense of, wow, together actually we are quite huge. And the power of this fire is huge for warming people maybe also for warning people or for so that that was the very basic uh, idea how can we uh, connect as artists and breaking through a lot of the competitive mechanisms that uh, kind of thrust upon us in in by operating in a market mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, situation. So what was actually going on? You decide you you placed a date. You made a date and yeah. said on this date, 25th of July 2020, the day of solidarity. Uh, artists from everywhere could post a fragment of work or 
a fragment of non-work, like work they were not able to mm-hmm. <laughs> describe what they were not able to do, with the hashtag thousand and one fires. And um, this simple act would identify this fragment as a fire. Mm-hmm. And because the hashtag is there, then the internet very helpfully enables these things to come together, you know, to be yeah. gathered on a on a page. So we made a website, 1001fires.org. And there you can see, because it goes automatically, all these fires that were posted. Mm-hmm. And actually, the people uh, started posting already in the weeks before. So it was maybe four weeks leading up to the 25th, in mm-hmm. which uh, hundreds of fires were posted wow. from yeah. all over the world. Yeah. yeah, it was quite impressive. And what was what was interesting is that it was a bit open. What is the goal? It was not uh, necessarily, you know, asking for attention. Yeah. For but it was really this very simple act of connecting uh, artistic works just to start to see um, and get a sense of who is your family out there maybe mm-hmm. is, is a way of seeing it and did you, do you think it worked what was the what is the let's say the the reflection afterwards the evaluation not evaluation <laughs> yeah the evaluation <laughs> I would say it worked to to a Good extent, of course. We we were uh, very few people driving this uh, yes. uh, project, and also not everyone had a lot of experience <laughs> with social media. So, so it it was a challenge, mm. you know, learn how to do Twitter and learn how to do Instagram post every day. Mm-hmm. So it did not go without. Uh, it could could be better. Mm. We, we have learned. <laughs> But a start has been made. Mm. I think the presence of the fires, w- especially on Facebook, was was pretty good. Mm-hmm. And you know what is uh, the reactions of uh, of people was very beautiful of artists that uh, that was so really appreciative that this was a generous action. It it was asking generosity. And giving generosity to yeah. each other and support. And hopefully in the future, we're going to start up again pretty soon. Because this, uh, all these fires, this, this, this project was only the start of creating a real network that uh, uh, people can join and have already joined by posting these fires. Um, to be able to literally con- contact each other mm. and also to be some kind of archive. Yeah. And of course, the whole circles around the NTL. Nordisk the Theater Odin Laboratorium. Theater, mm. Yeah, Nordisk Theater Laboratorium and the Odin Theater is a very big uh, part of, of this project. Mm. It's also a, a place or a way that many of the people that are attracted to this work can actually connect to each other. Yeah. And so to does the uh, the parliament of practices for instance um, do, do you meet actually at the moment or is it on hold? It's also on hold. What is the what is the the what is going to come um, what is the what is the plan and how can maybe also can people join can other if people are interested? Yes. Yes, uh, people definitely. Um, anyone who has a practice that they uh, feel that they would like to investigate what it means uh, to speak from that knowing, mm. from what you are really doing and what you are really uh, practicing, mm. uh, is is welcome. Uh, The web page will be will be uh, uh, finished shortly. It's parliamentofpractices.space for now, and we will put this link maybe again in the in the website. You can contact us on the cross pollination mm. uh, uh, website. Yeah. There's an email address there: mail at crosspollination.space. Mm. 
Uh, and we will start up again with a, a probably a newer group, a bit more focused. So the research will be more uh, uh, focused on topics. And not every week, but probably once every three weeks or so, three or mm. four weeks. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, let's also come to our practices. Um, mm. Yeah. What happened What happened during these these three months? It, uh, the very first uh, beginning, of course, we, we started a podcast and we did this kind of stuff, but it's, it's a different kind of work also for us, no? It's not um, what we uh, used to do. It's not going into the room and uh, prepare a new performance, uh, but uh, we did a lot of other things and we should talk about that. But the first thing that all I also came back to is a kind of a, uh, try to establish a routine, a daily routine, mm. and to stick to, to some training. Actually, to In the to spring here. Yeah, yeah, in the in the, act, in the spring. Yeah, it was the spring. Yeah, <laughs> that's the end of summer. Yeah, it was in spring. Yeah, I stick to 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 keeping fit somehow, and uh, I, I I directed my 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 time uh, a lot to uh, to martial arts uh, training. Actually, I did not in all this time. I did not uh, really. Um, we didn't rehearse so much mm -hmm. for something new for a new performance. Uh, because everything was also cancelled, and um, but uh, I s uh, I sticked to to this training uh, of uh, karate and kobudo, and then at some moment, as yeah I was saying before, we I act, I actually I I I, um, I was starting to get interested a lot in how to deal with the situation. How to deal with the uh, regulations, of mm. course, and with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, threat, with the uh, with the risk of performing or of creating events. Yeah. And but how to make something possible? How to make something yeah. possible for 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 spectators and performers to meet again uh, in a safe way? No? Yeah. And uh, that is when, uh, when we here in at Studio Seven Theater and with our bar, we have the fortune that we have a big outside mm -hmm. space where we are sitting also right now, um, and we decided to. We should have had a big summer festival, like a, uh, one day it should have been in July. One day of a festival, or two days, or three days, with like 400 people coming here, and uh, bands, and theater, mm. and uh, food, and everything. And um, so it was not possible. Of course, it was canceled. But we thought, if we, my 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 idea was, if we can't bring 300 people together in one evening, we could make 10 evenings with 30 people each. No, this is this kind of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> very uh, um, very straight logic, but in this spirit, um, we thought it could be interesting to 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 go for to go for it and to create a summer program to create a, a program to really dare to mm. um, to make something every weekend every weekend we started with music and it was ma mainly music because it was easy to get also to to people musicians around local musicians regional musicians and um, it was the rules were of course the rules that were uh, that were created by our government that we uh, that we uh, obeyed which are uh, of course they changed a lot in these times but you could also start if you if you research a little bit about how this works with this virus which we also got to know more and more through the research that was being made that soon we were able to see that the big risk is inside no yeah uh, of course then there was not so much numbers at least here in germany we didn't have so much number uh, it's big high numbers of of infections so it was quite calm it was good but of course Uh, it was. Uh, uh, we should avoid uh, another uh, another uh, lockdown or something. Yeah. You know? So, it, the big risk was inside inside of the building, and we quickly also realized that the risk was not so much 
door handles which you need to dis disinfect because of touching something. Uh, of course, it's good to wash your hands and everything, but it's not. It's a smaller percentage of, and also the risk of the 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 if you have a very very spitty. <laughs> spitty way of talking the risk as to many actors do yeah the risk to infect that directly somebody else is also part but it's not the it's not the the big issue the big issue was the the, the famous aerosols yeah which 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 are being spread out like smoke like when you when you mm -hmm. smoke it mm -hmm. spreads out slowly in the room inside and outside it does not outside it just goes with the wind yeah. goes away so you can be quite sure And there was also uh, research being made that it was like 20 times lower or the other way around inside was 20 times higher the risk. And so uh, practically, practically, maybe even not, not so important. So this outside space, it's, is quite safe. Yeah. If you, so this was, let's say the, 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 um, the, um, pr presumption, the, mm -hmm. say, pre mm -hmm. Yeah, the presumption, <laughs> the assumption, <laughs> the postsumption, <laughs> the neo postsumption, yeah, the, the perisumption, whatever, um, parasumption. Nice. <laughs> Let's keep that one. It was the parasumption that you could do things outside um, if you took care that the people when they go inside for the toilet or wh for whatever reason that they put on the very practical mask that everybody has now um, and uh, then start to do something and uh, it was we started with music we did a lot of music every weekend we had um, we had something to offer here um, And normally we did it like this, that it was on the evening, it was not late, it was at seven o'clock, so it would not disturb so much the neighbors also. And um, it would be also free entrance. But uh, yeah, I come back to that topic later because mm -hmm. it's also a tricky one. Um, so it was free entrance and we offered something. In the beginning of June we started every weekend with uh, music. And what was quickly happening is that The first day I was wondering, I was really nervous as I am usually when something is going on and I don't know, do people come, don't yeah. people not coming and yeah. and people came and uh, people came, a lot of people came, but not also not too much. Yeah. And it was a very nice feeling and the people were very thirsty, hungry for... Yeah for experience uh, yeah, yes, for sure for art for music yeah and for the yeah for the being together for the meeting i remember and when i had the first concert which was my partner in holland he was playing mm. uh, for the internet but i was allowed to be there as the wife <laughs> i was super happy <laughs> i cried i yeah. cried because i had not heard live music yeah for such a long time yeah, yeah. And it was, and um, so um, people came and people were very generous. Mm. So uh, they put a lot of money inside of the box Beautiful. for the performers. And it's still like this. Yeah. And I was wondering, we never did it here. We, we did maybe events once a month or something. We never did like every weekend. Yeah. But every weekend, a lot of people came. Yeah. And it, they were getting used to that every weekend something's happening. And we even had a very popular band here. It was two guys who played uh, very professional, good uh, cover music. And they were performing here outside. And there were 150 people. Wow. With a lot of distance, of course. Yeah. A lot of space. Yeah. yeah. The whole parking, parking lot, slot I, and nice. the... the the patio of our bar, everything. And we had an outside a bar also. And it was raining <laughs> in between. <laughs> that was a little that was a little funny people because stayed. people I, I I had to I had to tell to the people that um I was go getting on the microphone and said, sorry, it could happen that it's now going to rain. I, I'm sorry we can't go inside. You just have to stay and um and um 
tolerate it, <laughs> the situation. <laughs> Eat it. And some people got their umbrellas, some people, were, and it rained. And, and uh, of course, we made a break with the concert. We didn't start the concert at that moment. We waited. And uh, then all the tables were wet. And with my colleagues here that worked with us, we started to quickly dry everything afterwards. It was like 20 minutes of quite heavy rain. And uh, wow. people were getting under the tree, and but some people outside with the umbrellas. And then we were cleaning up all the tables. Everything was kind of wet, but then it was over. And the concert started, and the people stayed, 150 people. And it was such a good mood and uh, a lot of Beautiful. generosity. And uh, yeah. one, guy, uh, one guy had his birthday party here oh. with, with 10 or 20 people. And it was all... Um, and I'm glad that... Also from the from the data point of view, uh, yeah. uh, that nothing happened yeah. in the in the sense of yeah. uh, infection. Very true. Uh, I was checking the numbers always. There were there were of course in this time in Germany there were rises of numbers in the slaughterhouse in the big slaughterhouse mm -hmm. here in mm -hmm. this region, where um, where the people worked uh, together in the cold circumstances like in winter, and that there was a huge outbreak of, yeah. of virus in Holland too. Yeah, <laughs> I think but worldwide actually. Yeah, the slaughterhouses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then here we had every weekend we had fifty to one hundred and fifty yeah. people, and and nothing, and nothing happened. Yeah, it's we, very good. We kept all. Of course, here the regulation is it's a very sensible regulation that you need to keep the list of the people who come. Yeah, they need to, and then you have to. After four weeks, you have to. Uh, it's on paper. No, I, I don't do it. We don't do it here with some kind of app or something because it's the best is to do it on paper, and then after four weeks we burn it or we destroy it somehow, and so eat it or we eat it, <laughs> <laughs> feed it to the cat. No. <laughs> and so we had the data if somebody called from the from the health department, but we didn't. Not once, not once we have been called to. To um, to investigate yeah. some kind of a chain of of infections, yeah. so I'm so convinced that it was a good idea, and it was uh, and it worked. Yeah. The yeah. free entrance was one interesting topic because I started we started the program with three concerts and I put and ent free entrance and uh, then the 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 hat no hat, and then I got criticism from very harsh criticism from one musician of Dortmund who is organized in a, uh, who has a kind of organization for the for the uh, rights and good payment of musicians and he told me why are you posting like this free entrance is destroying our market actually no and i i said yes it's true somehow but um also we needed to 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 lower the bar also for people to start coming no so it's a kind of a dilemma. I don't. Mm. But then I figured out there was a. Uh, once I was in a festival in 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 France, uh, a b tiny tiny jazz festival, which had only two, two, uh, two, uh, two um, editions, two years, and then it was closed again. But I was fortunate to witness the first this first festival in a very small town in the south of France, and they had a very nice expression, which was called uh, "entre libre, mais nécessaire." Free entrance, but yeah. necessary. Yeah, you cannot translate it yeah. into German. But it was. Uh, but then I started. I just changed it. I didn't say free entrance. I said entrance with a free or with a fee that you can choose yeah. freely. Donation based, basically. Yeah. So that to make it clear to the yeah. people also. Then I started also in the concerts when I was speaking before when I was introducing the band or whatever. I was also starting to tell um, the people that this is this was a program out of out of um, desperation and mm -hmm. out of need, and this is not something sustainable. It's not that we are happy now and uh, and uh, whoa, uh, jolly good and uh, no, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a bad situation still for 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 everybody for. For people who work in events, for musicians, for performers, for performers, and it's not, um, it's not, um, how do you say? It's not free. It's not gratis. Mm -hmm. It's not. Yeah. And um, it is some fire, some kind of a, 
uh, action out of need. Uh, but people need to understand that yeah. money is involved and that they need to pay, even if it's one euro yeah. or 20 cents. So true. So true. I mean, that, that's. I really like uh, how you set it up. And I think there is a, a, a big, a strong link with, um, with two things. You know, one is the fact that the big theaters and the big structured circuit basically closed down. Right, all the the official festivals were cancelled, and and what happens then is that the small, spontaneous and local initiatives are the only way, basically, that you can organize something, yeah. and uh, and you did that brilliantly, really, really beautiful. I think it was also uh, very much appreciated, yes, especially that it's small and spontaneous and local and intimate and personal. You're kind of It seemed to me that theater was in a way released from a cage yeah. and brought back to something very close to its own heart, yeah. very intimate. And this comes to the second point, which is the hut. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when you have a big ticket for a big show, it's it's maybe expensive, and you but you don't really know where that money is going. There's a big building that needs to be paid. There's, mm. you know, a lot of stuff uh, going on. And you, you kind of, uh, there's a cut between your ticket and, and the performance, the performer. Mm -hmm. But with the hat, this very basic relation between spectator and performer is, and, and what this exchange is, because it's not really a, an transaction right the transaction would be this concert is 10 euros i put the value to 10 euros and you just decide if it's worth it mm. to you mm. but when you say give what you want it's a it's an exchange it's a gift and uh, and you open up the floor for something way more relational yes that's true on the other hand On the other hand, there is some big. Uh, it has some big flaws, which is the, of course, the risk, the not knowing as a performer, as an organizer, Definitely. how much money is going to. But be But that there. is also with ticket sales, right? You don't know how will come, how many will come, and I'm not like saying the hat is the best thing ever, but it just is this one aspect of performance that yeah. that you put the economical uh, exchange very close to mm. the personal relationship that is created yeah. by the... And that is a very good lesson, I think, both for the performers, yeah. the organizer, and for the spectators, yeah. that you... The hat has some... I think it is. there is a problem with the hat in that sense, that it's a kind of... A, it should be liberated, it should be... It should be uh, this concept should be developed into something more professional, because mm -hmm. this hat thing is also something before... And also now it means also sometimes it's, it's you know, Tom Waits, for instance, would not perform for a hat. I don't know him personally. Maybe he would, but uh, big stars would not perform for a hat. Not only because they're expensive, but also because it's just not, you cannot conceive this, no? That, that, that they, it's, it's a kind of a status also. If yeah. you have a, and this is the thing that one should, No, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a. Yeah, it's the, it's the system. It's the system. It's yeah. the system. Yeah, yeah. But but for instance, in and here I I'm thinking back on one of our guests, Gonzalo, who is from the street theater, mm. and in the street theater, the hat is almost a given. Even there are even very big festivals that that pay the cost for the performer, but then the fee has to be earned with the hat because mm. it's integral mm. and it has nothing to do with status. Yeah. The big groups do it, the small groups do it. Mm. And uh, and how he speaks about the hat is mm. fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's Because what, one of the things, just very short, one of the things that, that really struck me is he says, it's an art to play the hat. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the art consists of making a real relationship with the audience a real one a human one mm. and so 
making the moment that when the hat comes, the people are happy mm -hmm. and have their own motivation to put money in there mm. because they want to do it. Yeah. And not because they feel blackmailed or they feel pity for mm. you or yeah. they think, well, yeah, just the spare change that I have because otherwise I look like a like a shit. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> he says that is the real art of the hut. Yeah, and I think I think uh, yeah we and I mean and this I is what you what you also kind of did yeah. with your speech to name it in a way that it's that it's uh, uh, put in a different light actually. Yeah, it should be put in a different light. It should be. It should be. Um, it should be developed. This concept. Yes. Especially in Germany. I mean, we uh, in in this small town here. Of course, we don't have a street uh, art culture, but also in some bigger towns in Germany, we have a difficulty with street art. Yes. Culture. No? Yeah, yeah. In France or yeah, Italy it's or like uh, beggars or yeah, exactly. In uh, this pity or this beggar yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. It's also a little bit. Here in Germany, connected with the head, on to. and one should free this concept yeah. of this uh, yeah. and develop it to because something mature. Because it's a mature. powerful thing, eh? Yes, it is. Yeah. Also, and also, oh. it's very, I think, very didactic mo or like illuminating moment for the performer uh, to do again and again throughout your life mm. to get this very close and intimate relationship with that cycle of performing building a relationship and having this moment of the hat. Yeah. If you never have that moment, there might be just just a question, but there might be something very essential about performing that you have never really stared in the face. Mm. If you're always in this kind of safely built situation, mm -hmm. no matter if there comes only one a person with a three-legged dog, you know, you will get paid. Mm. Yeah. And then we, so we developed this. It was working very fine. Mm. People were very generous. And then I also tried to uh, contradict it by having two, <laughs> two events, also concerts, with tickets. Open air. Ah, interesting. Uh, and it was also... I wanted to test it. I wanted to test yeah. here for our place because we did not before. We did not dare to take. When we did, we mm -hmm. took like ten euros for a concert or twelve, maybe maybe fifteen. But this was the maximum, and it was already. So, is it too expensive for people here? No, because it, our place it's it's a small bar. It's yeah. not a. It's not like a concert a, venue. A concert yeah. venue, no, yeah. But then we this summer program, and I decided to invite old friends. It's a guitar duo. Which is very high level. Uh, they are very professional. They have their own uh, recording studio and uh, everything, and uh, they are, are very active since 30 years. Mm. Tierra Negra, and they were here. They have been here two times before, but they were here. And I decided I want to test if I make tickets of uh, like okay. Now it uh, does not sound so much for other venues, but for us, yes, 20 euros or 22 mm. euros. Mm -hmm to be able to pay them a real salary um, and also to try to control or to see how many people come. It also has an advantage or was a test to have more, to be more calm. I know that 50 people are coming. I know that 50 people pay 20 euros and I have the fee for, yeah. The, yeah. for, the, for, the, for the musicians. And um, let's see if it works. And this worked also. Yeah. Uh, it worked also. And... Um, so this is the two. Yeah. There is no dogma behind. No, it. exactly. That there is. Uh, you can experiment, and yeah. you can. And have a mixed, uh, mixed yeah. offerings also. Yeah. 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 And there's, mm. there's, there's one more thing that I was just uh, wanted to note, hearing your story about Schwerte and what you did this summer, and that is that, that, uh, you know, you, you mentioned it you have the luxury of having a place, which is a luxury you earned. Mm. And you work very hard to have <laughs> that luxury. So <laughs> it's uh, it's absolutely deserved. And there's a big lesson in that, is that if you have your own access to a place, as artists, in this uh, smaller scale, so we're not talking about running a concert hall, right? That would be 
too much. You would not have any other <laughs> professional life. Mm. You you are an actor, so you need to act. But doing these small scale, intimate activities and having your own means of production in that sense, even if you're speaking, we have a place to rehearse where we say when we rehearse or not. I think it's a it's a huge thing for us to all in aspire to. Yes. Actually. Yeah, and now yeah, of course. And uh, yeah, it's it's it feels huge it's a, it's, power a stru- it's a it's a it's a real struggle here a lot of times to keep it up, to have it. it's not a it's not a big mm. economical success this place. It's, it's a lot of work and but sometimes it's 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 really it's like as you said a good Marxist tradition. The means of production are in yeah. our hand. It's enabling. No? You yes, can, you can um, take initiative. Yes, and we can invite. No, so I invite also now. <laughs> you come. You want to come here to do something, a project, or a rehearse, or just to get to know us. You, you can come here. This is the advantage of the bar. You can just come and we have a coffee or a beer together. It's uh, it's very it's very good and um, yeah and then okay this was now a big uh, I was an organizer I was an event manager yeah, yeah? it was a, it's a very interesting experience um, very good one and then also we had the chance to act yeah we had the chance to perform I had the chance to perform where did you perform here here. Uh, now maybe just yesterday shortly. also with yes. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just shortly about this festival d- which we did here in Schwerte, mm-hmm. uh, which was also uh, very interesting because no, in Schwerte it's a small town again here in North North Rhine Westphalia, but there is a tradition since 25 years that there is a street theater festival every August. Ten thousand people come. It's a politicum also political issue because there are some. Uh, People, uh, of course, and the politicians that say it's too expensive, it's whatever, and uh, yeah, you know. But uh, this year definitely was cancelled. What happened was that the money that the city provided for the festival normally just went back into the into the normal yeah wherever we don't yeah. know where it went. We will see yeah. in the new just uh, cancelled when they pass the new uh, how do you call it household the new uh, yeah budget the new budget. They we will see where it went. But it went to fix some holes in some, uh, yeah, in some of the administration, I think. So it's a big, and no discussion about it, no, no, nothing. But then one of our colleagues here, a light technician, uh, he invented, he said he wanted to do a, an alternative festival. And uh, it was called Around the Block, um, which is a very simple title, but it was very, very, very nicely done. And uh, he managed to get all the private sponsors that were normally also supporting the big festival to support this small, smaller festival, and it was designed as a as a as a as a walk around the block for uh, for uh, in total I think forty five groups no fifteen groups each evening yes forty five groups of 20 people each mm-hmm. who went around the block in a kind of a very fast rhythm. So for the performers that have been on the stations, they should perform like I performed. Uh, you were also performing with us sometimes, but I performed like 30 or yeah, 45 mm-hmm. times almost. And it was a, a big work, but it was an interesting proposal. And the people had to buy tickets. Yeah. Uh, and they had to... and. What happened was, for instance, that there was one. There is one doctor here in Schwerte. He bought 20 tickets for all his friends. He booked one group, and they went. And it, it was there were the groups were called like like countries, uh, uh, islands. Like I think islands, oh, islands. Island. Yeah, Zanzibar, Madagascar. Floating islands, actually. Yes, <laughs> yes. And they nice. were <laughs> they were going around with a tour guide, which were uh, which were, uh, the tour guides were people of Schwerte who uh, volunteered. And they passed around the block, seeing a lot of little four-minute actions, intervention scenes, and finally coming to a, to a big parking lot where a, a big house was uh, lit up, and on the balcony there was a choir, and they had a big singing in the end. Uh, uh, all, everything open air, and um, 
And great weather. And great weather, yeah, this is... Lucky, lucky. <laughs> lucky. <laughs> not too hot and not raining. Um, and it was a very interesting experience to perform. We also supported the festival by, uh, by, by uh, in an organizational way, but... We did not organize it. It was also a big uh, advantage. <laughs> we just <laughs> performed. Um, and uh, it, it gives me... Yeah, it, it was a very good thing to, to be mm. a part of it mm -hmm. and to see that things can work and that you can create something uh, with some smart ideas. And, uh, and I think uh, support of the local community... Yes. You know, I I was here with uh, my buddies from cross pollination. Yeah, you have been rehearsing. here at the same time. You have been here. It was almost a coincidence. Yeah. That you uh, that you from cross pollination decided you make your first real work meeting. Yeah. Here at our place at Studio Seven Theater, uh, in this week where at the end of the week at the end of August there would be this festival. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good good uh, coinciding, and uh, and at the very last evening. There was an, a closing applause, which we missed. It's another because story. Of pizza. <laughs> because It's another of pizza. story. We don't have to share that. <laughs> our director, our director, got all the applause. Yeah, yeah, that, that was lovely, That's actually. Good. Normally, he does not yeah, get the exactly. applause. So, so that was a good <laughs> thing. But, but we stood there uh, on the square, and all the people were smiling. Not just this, like. Uh, party let's drink kind of smiling but very connected to each other like we did this together and wow it was like Schreter met Schreter you know met itself mm -hmm. uh, in that moment in a really beautiful way and there was almost no one from outside it, it felt like a yeah like a family party yeah. somehow <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> which is in, you know that's so lovely um that something can happen in a town for itself not with this this added you know we're going to attract thousands of people and make a big splash is good for our public relations or whatever you know for us yeah and beautiful yeah and people were saying that normally they would go to this big festival to the street yeah. theater festival and they would say ah uh, during the festival i never I'm not able to see anything because I'm late maybe to the show yeah, and then exactly. I'm in the, in the hundredth row. And uh, <laughs> now I was always yeah. in the front row. Yeah. Because yeah. of the organization. And now we should find a way to to keep or to keep this memory of it and also to, to do these kind of mm -hmm. things. But of course also we we cannot... The, the festival should, should be there. It should be there. There should be the big festival. Um. If not, there's also the danger that that I think um, that um, this is a political issue also. Mm -hmm. no? If you say, okay, we can have a festival and people pay tickets. Normally it was a free festival for 10,000 of people, but you can also make a festival. And buy Why do you need any money from... No? So there's a lot of things that you have to juggle with. Totally. And... Uh, And it, th there's uh, the right to for the existence of these of the big things and of the small things, and one should develop both a according to yeah. one's own yeah. need and yeah. nature, no, and yeah. profession. So exactly, uh. that's that's so true. And to ha you know, the the image of an ecosystem is uh, is very lovely because it it is uh, you can really imagine why there should be big animals there, but also the small ones, and why there should be these huge trees, but also, you know, flowers. And uh, yeah. yeah, they have their own function. Uh, but it, it was really powerful to see, and uh, and I think it has sparked some uh, some other experience, maybe, in mm. uh, in people, and, yeah. and for the performers. Yeah. I love this uh, 20 people audiences. Yeah. Yeah, it's for us. It's it was good because, of course, I consider myself a part of a theater culture which works more for this. Works more yeah. in the intimate situation, yeah. in the small situations. Yeah. And this is yeah, it has a lot of layers. Mm -hmm. Of course, dramaturgical aspects, also economical aspects, political aspects. Yeah. Because small things cost much more in relation normally. 
but we have I to find know. I don't know that uh, I mean you have to find a way if you need if you can only have 10 people in your audience you have to find a way to 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 pay the Yeah I think it's it's you know the, you mentioned politics and that's very rightly so because because I think uh it's not that they cost more but they are less likely to receive structural support and therefore seem to cost a lot more uh, I mean more maybe just if you imagine that you earn money from tickets Yeah. Then it's you cannot uh, if you have only ten spectators maybe for a show that it's difficult it could cannot be only the tickets there is or uh, otherwise that it is but, a it, there is 20 a twenty or fifty yeah like you had here yeah that's a good yeah yeah that's a that's good. a good size and it could really work yeah but only on tickets it for a seven people theater group you also cannot pay the bills. So there is a value in this intimate situation. There is a value, but it's also something. There's a there's something which, yeah, it needs to be funded. Yeah, yeah. It needs to be funded. And it's funny that people are are very willing to pay 60 euros for a huge thing, but not for a small thing. Where you would think the intimacy value mm. of a small thing is mm. actually maybe even you could say it one would maybe pay more even, you mm. know, for mm. something that is very exclusive yeah. and very uh, special than for something that plays eight days a week for 15,000, 2,000 people yeah. at a time. Yeah. I'm thinking musicals here. Yeah. It's easily cost 60 euros, you know, mm. to go to such a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or more. So it's uh, now we will close this because it's a, it's a big big issue of of this whole topic and it's a lot. We are going to make um, so this podcast is starting again now. We are going into a new phase because we started it as a pandemic podcast, you could say, in the midst of the lockdown of the um, as a necessary thing, and now we're it is becoming a. As I quote, uh, I quote a theater person, uh, a woman that we will maybe interview in a short time. She was speaking about peri-pandemic theater. So I think it means something uh, that it's on the same it, at the same time, like during during the pandemic or at the side of yeah, mm -hmm. while it is going. So it's not it's not about it's, it. It's not about. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, suppressed by it, but it's going along and it works with the situation. So this is now becoming a peri-pandemic podcast because this will stay with us for Oy. some time more. But this means that we will we will start again and we will have... Uh, T-shirts, mugs. T-shirts, mugs and uh, merchandise, <laughs> merch to buy. Peri-pandemic podcast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 we will start to uh, make... Um, find our rhythm again as we like as we are able to do it and have some interesting guests and i want to also to focus or to to have some talks about uh, uh, cultural policy policies with people who who work in yep. that field yeah and and also i want to speak with uh, this person who speak, spoke about peri pandemic theater who is a she is a theater um, maker and a psychologist christiane hütter and uh, she She works a lot on, on this hybrid situation, digital and physical. Right. Uh, the connections between. And she has a lot of interest in that. And uh, yeah, these kinds of topics we will still address. And I'm looking very much forward to it. And uh, yeah, now I want to tell you about something else which I did in this summer. <laughs> which I was part of the reason. Uh, and which led me to some to some reflections which I want to quickly or um, yeah not not dogmatically not like a program or a manifesto or something like that just just to sh just to touch lightly um, and the issue is that I, I I became I I was gifted I became a father I was gifted a yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was I was gifted a beautiful, of course, the most beautiful child yes. in the universe, as every child. Oh, you're right. Yeah, she's beautiful. And um, yeah, she was born in um, 31st of July. So this is uh, so this was also my summer break a little bit 
was not a break, but it was not a <laughs> vacation, but it was a, just another time, uh, time out of time, actually. And um, I'm not going to go a lot into the 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 the, the how everything went. It was a very interesting process of course also the pregnancy mm. no, this was also already a process and um, then the birth it was a it we had some difficulties it was a like a real uh, Greek drama mm -hmm. somehow with uh, with yeah. a conflict with a conflict situation uh, uh, with antagonists and protagonists With uh, <laughs> did you have a Deus ex machina? Yes, oh my we God. <laughs> had a Deus ex machina with the peripetia, no, the turning Oy. point, just with the climax, and after the climax, the turning point, and a very beautiful, happy ending with a with a natural birth, with a lot of labor, with a lot of struggle, mm -hmm. with a lot of pain, of course, also, but with a lot of um, euphoria in the end, and. Uh, And a very good result. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this kind of led me to... Now, I heard the story of a theater director who was uh, giving uh, some kind of a uh, talk about how he, how he works on a performance. And uh, this is... Um, and somebody asked him, well, when do you know when the performance is finished. Yeah, that's a good question. Huh? And uh, he smiled and said, after nine months. <laughs> and um, so this is, this is the topic of, of today, uh, is for me giving birth, giving birth to, to something, giving birth to, to performance, giving birth to a being. And somehow... Um, I feel that uh, performance can be like a, la also a literary text, mm. a book, a story. Yeah, any creation. A film no. is like a, something that you that you work on a lot of time. You work, and then it becomes a being of its own. And um, um, yeah, let's just let's dive a little bit. Into this, into this process. I Actually, was, yeah. in, in that sense, do you have a feeling that uh, that you, or when did you, when did it become very real for you? This uh, during the pregnancy, I guess. Yeah, uh, can or I, was it immediately? There was a, there were, some people say that no, there is this moment when you suddenly yeah realize that you're yeah. becoming a parent. I did not have this moment. I kind of floated into it. Mm -hmm. Also, now there is not a big change. It's not, it's not like I'm suddenly realizing all my responsibilities or all that. It's not like this. It's uh, it's different. But of course, there is the movement of the baby before in the belly. You 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 move and you see what is this. But of course, it's also different for the father and for the mother. It's different yeah. experience. I heard sometimes that fathers also they 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 really start to bond and to get a real relation more at the birth, in right. the moment of the birth. Yeah. Because before it is kind Abstract. of an alien that yeah. is, you don't know, yeah, yeah you, you, you don't feel it. You yeah. can feel it while I was moving in the belly, but... And so f that's why I also focus maybe more on the birth itself, mm -hmm. on the process, on the labor. Um, because I, I, was also, I was accompanying my, my wife with that. Very closely, this was the this was the pandemic situation because we were in the clinic at the end, and uh, I had to stay or to not stay, so right. I could not go inside or out. Yeah, um, we had a there comes a big, very big, uh, very very important character, which is the midwife, and she mm -hmm. organized the family uh, room for us in the hospital, mm -hmm. so I could stay, and we stayed four days, and. Um, so this this drama was uh, was developing there, and uh, yeah, in the process, it's um, it is a very interesting process. You can read a lot about and hear a lot about how it works, 
uh, how a natural birth works. And maybe I can just say it shortly that it never works in one way. Mm -hmm. And I, I also want to avoid misunderstandings by saying that a natural birth, like, ah, oh, it's so natural, uh, that is the only way. No, it, a any birth is the right birth, can be the right birth. It can also be a, a C-section or you call it cesarea. It can also be uh, there is we have the we have the means the me medical means at hand to 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 treat every birth in a in a way that it corresponds because every mother and every child and father are different. Mm. And um, yeah, there's not one way. No, there's it not one go. way. But mm. even the natural way, it's not one way. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is this very this is the this is a fascinating process. The process of the hormones, the process how the body and the mind function together or don't function together. You know, we, we had both things also. And the situation was that, that she did not want to come out, mm -hmm. our child. So, so we were 12 days due after the... And there was no sign of <laughs> labor, anything. No? Yeah. So then we went yeah. to the clinic and then it was a struggle. And then on the 15th day... So this is almost for for the medics here for the for the doctors it's almost like you know, certain death or something uh, but on the 50th day she she finally came she made her way naturally and uh, it is very com compl complex so that's why I'm going to abstract now so you need to, to you need a kind of an and we can pass quickly to the performance side of it you need a kind of an open process a listening process how it is going maybe to develop mm -hmm. but also you can never be sure how it will be in the end you can prepare for everything you can make the best plans the best dramaturgy the best the best uh, outline of the performance you can plan for this light or this whatever but then in the end you you realize that it does not work it does not come out there is no life maybe mm -hmm. there is something 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 stuck and it can be That it is also, maybe it is the a wrong time. Maybe to, you need another. Maybe you need to go for a rehearsal. Maybe you need to change the place. Maybe the place is, was not the right place, and you need to go somewhere else, outside or inside, or you need to take a week somewhere to isolate yourself. And and with the birth of the mammals, no, the mammal birth. <laughs> <laughs> it is like this that the animal looks for a quiet place looks for a calm place to 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 start this process because it is a it is a dance of a lot of different chemicals in the body which uh, which are us no these chemicals mm. we are those chemicals and they are, are us and it's a lot of hormones but i will i want to focus on two which is oxytocin and adrenaline mm -hmm. Um, these are two contradicting hormones which uh, serve some functions. So the oxytocin, it's sometimes called uh, the love hormone or the shy hormone. It, it, it appears when you hug. It appears when you have sex. It appears when you, when you have physical contact. Mm. It appears when you are with a person that you like, it, uh, that you are attracted to, also in an er erotic sense. It appears when you're relaxed, when you have a, like a, in the evening, at dawn or something, or in the night. Um, Can you have it alone? It appears also when you would be alone and relaxed, or? Uh, I don't know, really, I don't okay. know. But in the birth, of course, it appears. Now we go on the birth that the oxytocin is the hormone that starts with other things of course I, i focus on oxytocin and adrenaline there's a lot of other things going around also oxytocin starts the laboring process mm -hmm. oxytocin starts this process that the uterus is starting to move and to get active and is also the cause of the pain that the mother feels that the muscles are going to start to push mm -hmm. to massage actually the baby down Now down, slowly and with in waves. No, mm -hmm. it comes the one of the uh, this labor. It comes 
and it goes away. And this is a, a something that happens, oxytocin happens when you're relaxed and when you're in, an, in a familiar environment or an environment that you like, then it, it, it starts. And then adrenaline comes. Adrenaline is a stress hormone and the hormone that makes you, yeah, it makes you strong. It makes mm -hmm. you, and somehow it seems that it has been designed by nature so that you don't give birth in the middle of a tiger attack or something, no? You have the process, it starts, but then yeah, there's something going on, some stress, somebody I don't know. Okay, it stops. Mm -hmm. It stops. Adrenaline comes and it stops. Nothing. No pain, no labor, nothing. And even to that the extent that I, I heard stories that, that it can even reverse itself. It can even get, go back a little bit. So it's a very mysterious and fascinating thing, but it depends on the right circumstances. Right. You can... You can um, start the labor process and start the birth process and then it can be interrupted because somebody asks you, what are you going to do tomorrow? Or no? Logical thinking pushes away the oxygen. Interesting, yeah. Stress, people that you don't know, uh, bright light, like uh, artificial light, movement, action, uh, thinking, as I said, stops this process and makes you having a break of course also from the pain makes you um, and but it, it it stops this process and then um, it is a dance of these two elements so the some of the reasons of course it's not not a dogma or something but some of the reasons that in hospitals the cesarea rate is more higher than in, for instance, home birth or birth in some special designed birth places. Because, of course, mothers at home start with the labor. with their, uh, They start with the labor at home normally, and then it goes and it goes, okay, it goes, yeah. And then I call the hospital, like, yeah, I can come, I come. And then you make your way, and in the car maybe, maybe you have to pack some things, maybe in the car, and then you get, and you need to give out your your insurance card and you make these formulas and then there's a lot of thinking going on a lot of different and it stops and it can be even of course it can go on normally it goes it, it goes on and also hospitals are now being have been redesigned to have a more more um, soothing uh, more environment. soothing environment yeah but after eight hours the midwife changes and another shift comes Another one person you don't know. And it can happen for some women that they stop and there's no nothing going on anymore. And then doctors might say, well, it's too risky, there's stop there's no movement. Uh we are going, we're taking it out. No? Uh so it depends very much on the on the people that you're around with, on the circumstance, on the and on the help. And um If the, if the process go, goes normal, then this then there is this dance of oxytocin and adrenaline, which which oxytocin comes and makes the pain and the labor and starts the process, and then there is a break. Adrenaline comes back, and then there comes back the ox, and then until the end where it is, uh, it gets more intense, more intense, and the woman also gets into a kind, and also the man in my case, <laughs> gets into a kind of. Um, very different kind of state of attention uh, and and this is where i was so wondered because it's a kind of a state of mind and of 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 uh, um, of your being that i know from very intense rehearsals you know these rehearsals also in music when you feel that the the air is getting dense and you cannot do anything else but just follow the process and trying to in the case of the father trying to to make the case of the father would be the case of the assistant director or 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 the case of one an observer who is there maybe no and there is trying to he's trying to 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 bring to to um, feed this attention with his own attention with her own attention and To, to stay with the trouble, mm -hmm. maybe we could mm -hmm. quote that, to stay with the process, to, to give your positive, um, calm and active at the same time 
uh, action or not action sometimes to it so that the process of the rehearsal because sometimes in rehearsals there is this moment where it gets very intense and there can appear something new no something unknown embracing the unknown something unknown appears a new color of the performance a new meaning mm -hmm. an object takes another shape or maybe even a turning point appears uh, in this process and and you see it and you try to help it to get it to the to the light um and this is what i was what was so um mm. apparent for me in this situation of the very intense beautiful uh, yeah birth that i was a kind you recognize I, it i recognized it from these from these also gifted moments of intense rehearsal which don't appear of not it's not normal it's uh, the normal the 99% of the performance work is hard work waiting nothing happens it's uh, no it does not work and then there is are these moments that something passes to some mm -hmm. other stage yeah and um yeah And I, I think what I also want to reflect about is that we need to, we can, of course, we can do performances and plan performances and design rehearsals in a way that, very fast way, we can plan it a lot. There is also sometimes the need of making something very structured, something very fast. But sometimes there's also performances where you need to You don't know really what the end is going to be, how it will look like. You have some clue, you have some red threads, but maybe it's the wrong one. And you need to... It's more about creating a kind of a space and a, and a time for something to appear. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think, what we could call an organic process. And I think the point that... I'm making with this is that um, it's important to have in mind that a performance like a like a child has its own need and its own life and its own difficulties and sometimes in some moments you have to follow it and you can you can't really predict um how it's going to to work yeah. out yeah. in the end and this is a and it's even not a method this is something beyond method and something beyond it's at the same time very pragmatic what works works what speaks to me works at the same time it's a uh, very uh, open and very uh, also not logical Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in, uh, I uh, very beautifully described uh, Simon. Wow, it it's it's deep, actually, because it goes to the very essence of uh, of life, you know, of creation, and and how that is not to be captured somehow or standardized or put into a solid technique or solid methodology or solid theory yeah. even yet there are things that you can know and get known to as you recognize start to recognize the patterns mm -hmm. and things that appear like this density in the air I I, I I could not you know say what exactly is happening but I definitely recognize it when you say that mm -hmm. something is happening something is coming and this What strikes me very much is your uh, description of how the hormones react to the environment and the circumstances and the actions that are going on. Mm. And um, that, you know, the, the importance of creating the right environment for something to happen. Yes. Now, we don't know it yet. Yeah. Is so key. It's so essential. Mm. And yet, 
we have we find ourselves very often in a in a circumstances where we have very little um power actually over our environments and over the time that we are able to spend there and mm. the uh, exact conditions in which we which we can be and that's uh, something to really think about as creators mm. as people who make make stuff and it it connects to me quite much to what we noted before the means of production to have some kind of uh, um, make it your own whatever that may mean mm. gives you the more of that uh, uh, ability to shape mm. the environment so that the birth <laughs> the labor of birth can mm. be done that is uh, yes and also an important part of this is also the The pain, the pain that the woman feels is not a pain like from a wound. It's a, I don't know it because I did not mm -hmm, feel it. Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of a pain. And it's a pain that shows the woman how to move. Because the pain gets better if she moves, if uh -huh. she breathes. Breathes yeah. and moves. Breathing is for giving oxygen to the child because there's a danger that in the moment there's too much stress and the child does not get air, uh, I mean oxygen, through the umbilical cord. Right. But... Um, um, so it's also a very active dialogue, actually, that the pain is... Yeah, the pain is showing the woman mm -hmm. because she has to get up and move. This is why we the what you see in the films about birth is of course a, a lie, uh, because this is the reality. No, for, I mean for many a, women. Yeah, it's a reality. This is the problem. Yeah, because uh, normally you should uh, the, the the good midwives tell the women to get up, to walk around, yeah. to move, to breathe, yeah. because the pain, because the, the child has to make an impossible action. The child mm -hmm. knows it somehow, but how does it know? I don't know, it's mysterious. But it has to turn like twice. It has to turn really, literally, like go spiraling down mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the, the uh, and passing the hips and spiraling out in a very slow process and has to move the head has to turn around and and so the mother has to 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 also to move and to give so to make space for this for this child to to and yeah and this um um the pain um is also yeah somehow i think giving uh importance you cannot not feel this pain no? yeah um Going back to the rehearsal, mm -hmm. it's it's not pain that you yeah, feel, but it's insistency. It's right? insistence, yes, and it's some kind of a um, rigor. Yeah. At the same time, not with the frowned, frowned. Uh, how do you say? Mm -hmm. it? It's not frowning rigor that you want. No, it's just a kind of a. Uh, yeah, it's a different discipline. No, it's, it's a different. different it's a di yeah, it's a, it's a different kind of discipline. It's not a. It is a kind of a seriousness that you give to that moment that you that you need to bring to give birth to a new scene or to a yeah to new scene in a performance or even to the performance itself and <clears throat> a kind of a rigor and seriousness at the same time lightness at the same time sometimes laughing helps can help in some it's so this is the yeah. this is the this is this also is the, the movement no? the, yeah the this is the process. this is the this is the funny th this is the, the the great thing about these the, the parallel because you can also get stuck in seriousness and rigor and wanting to give a natural birth and i want to give a natural and then it does not work maybe you just need to lighten up and listen to some jokes and laugh and and this can also be in a group process of a rehearsal of a performance you have these moments where it's getting tense but you cannot you don't come forward because it's too there is something too too rigid yeah you have a fix uh, idea yeah. fix no and a fixed idea in your head and you get you have to get rid of it so you laugh maybe you maybe you make a run through without objects maybe you make a run through with jazz music instead of mm -hmm. uh, these are the techniques that some directors also yeah. have 
to to lighten up the process to change to yeah, to, to massage to, also yeah. this uh, muscle that's st yeah. starting to get stuck yeah <laughs> and also actors actresses are from my own experience are they don't like to make something new they like to stick to what they know we like to stick to what we know uh to give birth to a new scene to a new aspect scary. of your character is scary yeah, yeah it's scary It is, and it does only work in the right yeah. uh, moment, in the right circumstance. But here I feel a, mm. a very deep difference between playing music and creating theater, mm -hmm. which I've been playing music now for 25 years and doing theater maybe for three. Mm -hmm. So it's a big difference. I'm not so good yet in theater, but... But this fear that, or it's <laughs> like the the impact of the unknown mm -hmm. in theater is is so complete because I at least for me it feels like you in a theater scene you you are entirely involved your your physical uh, the way that you move your interact with the words with the gesture with the there's nothing you can keep out of the scene it's all there mm. everything whereas in music you can still say okay you know maybe uh, maybe my t-shirt doesn't look that good but the music works and that's the only thing yeah yeah this is the thing that musicians you find me i find it so because musicians normally they don't care about the circumstances no they come they have beer on the stage they 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 talk like how musicians talk about their music sometimes gross or uh, very funny or they make jokes about uh, 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 <laughs> how how shitty this tune is and then they play and it just like an angel no yeah they It's play crazy. like a, yeah there's almost an opposition sometimes yes. there that is interesting as as uh, as opposed to 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 some maybe some Actors or, or, or theater people who try who try to also who need not not everybody needs this. There's different types of actors and directors yeah. and of theater groups. There's everything that works works, but there is a, also sometimes the need for yeah for 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 having for turning for concentrating or concentrating is the wrong word to to have a, another kind of a attention to to leave out the daily life let's say to leave out to make some space mm -hmm. yeah for the to have your rituals maybe before the performance to make a to everybody is different but so this is a <laughs> yeah i think it's it's very different i mean i don't want to give the in, the impression that all musicians are like this and all actors are like this it's not no, that no. it is just that that music also in a way it's it's stronger i feel than theater so it mm. you know when you play music maybe the need for this perfect environment is not so big because the music just takes you somewhere mm. immediately yeah it, the, the sound just negates everything else and uh and you can be completely in that yeah. sonic world yeah whereas in theater is everything has to be balanced just right mm. And actually, this is interesting. Maybe uh, uh, the process we are now in with crop, with the performance uh, part of cross pollination. We were here in Schwerte in an incredibly uh, chaotic space with children running around, and uh, and the and the space was chaotic, and the props were chaotic. E everything was basically chaotic, and and we try to accept this chaos and find this this almost music way of concentrating from within mm. and building this bubble from within mm. i'm not sure how uh <laughs> how this will end but mm. it's a it's a very conscious choice to mm. actually not create this this isolation mm -hmm. but to see what happens when you work kind of with a porous mm. uh um space yeah and even uh, we are thinking uh to rehearse at some point in the public space yeah to see what happens mm -hmm. when yes. life is surrounding 
yeah. this process. Yeah, there is a big... Uh, I mean, great directors, they did these kind of experiments to, to test, to also to... Like Peter, yeah, Peter Brook, for instance, he, in the 70s, mm -hmm. he was a f famous director, Shakespeare, uh, Royal Shakespeare Company, and then he started his research center in Paris. And uh, he took a performance and took it somewhere into a public school and played it like a test, like a rehearsal yeah. in front of uh, school kids without props, without all the props, without the scenography, without... And it's a kind of a conscious choice to, to shake, yeah. you know, to give a new impulse yeah. to the process. Also maybe to, mm. to invite uh, in the performance... Um, some kind of inner uh, strength you know when you know that you can uh, work in there mm. and that this oracle that you are building together that is that is creating and generating that it is not such a fragile thing mm. after all yeah and then it's interesting that you cannot make a method out of it you cannot copy it just like this you cannot say Ah, Peter Brook did it like this. We should do it like this. It <laughs> normally it will not work yeah. because it came out of a kind of a need. Yeah. And this is maybe now the 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 assumption, para assumption, <laughs> that sh is maybe the point of why I'm talking about this about giving birth. It that I think that somehow being aware of these powers of these hormones, I would. I would like to have a study on actors if in the process of a rehearsal there's oxytocin coming I'm sure. up or whatever. I'm sure. <laughs> This, uh, yeah. and, and It's also the and hormone of the orgasm. When the, so if, you, if there is an orgasm, there is oxytocin. So uh, it's, uh, it's an ecstatic yeah. hormone uh, or le can lead you to ecstasis. And uh, my point is that I think that being aware of these aspects of creating can affect, can, yeah, has something to do also or can have something to do with the quality, with the aspect of quality of the result. Of course, there is the danger that you have the child is born and you raise it in the wrong way. <laughs> in the sense of the performance that you have made this great effort and you have this great scene and then you repeat it Yeah. And everything is gone. And it did not uh, catch it does life. Not yeah. yeah, it it is not sustainable. Yeah. Because in theater we have to repeat. This is the other great paradox. Yeah. Of yeah. course, the birth is once. It's one spontaneous event. You don't repeat it. This is the big difference to theater where you have to repeat. And this is, I think, where the aspect of... There are two aspects which I want to touch. The one is this. I, th I think that has something, this process of the rehearsal of the, these aspects or the, 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 the being aware of these powers of these uh, forces mm -hmm. that govern the creative process has something to do, have something to do with the quality in the end. And um, the beauty of the birth is also that it's something else from you that you know It's not, it's, you're not expressing yourself during birth. You're very, very, you're almost serving right. something else. You're not, not almost, you are serving. Yeah. You are a servant of this process of this child. Or you yeah, give, this is you serve, really important. You serve this other being. Yeah. So to conceive, to, to think about the performance as something different also from me actor simon which expresses who expresses himself or has a new character or has a new aspect of his personality and a monologue and a no it's it's a it's something else from me and i this is the process also of the 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 it can hurt this process that you have to bring it out and it has to confront real life no and then you then you have to be aware that it's it takes it has a life of its own and maybe you need to change some things also in the first presentations in front of an audience 
no? Mm. And um, and I feel that this is a danger of theater that or it's it's a, it's a beautiful aspect if you think that the performance is something else of you some some new yeah. being that you help to yeah. grow up and you treat as a as a as a as an entity of itself which means a kind of a, yeah a kind of care work <laughs> yeah no and listen to it yes listen to its needs and uh, and where it could grow into yeah and i think we we without making a kind of dogma uh, 4.0 or something but to think about and to 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 reflect and to to be aware that um that it can be important to design also performances that that we want to make that i want to make in a way to 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 think that there is this that there can happen this process of birth and in that moment when you see this you know what to do you know now is the moment you have to be like active attentive and work towards this um beyond beyond the group dynamics beyond the other famous actor who is there who has the leading role beyond this to give birth to this to this uh, to this important moment and then of course yeah. to 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 pre to care for it to preserve the life and i don't i wonder if this is a uh, possible to to do actually in a, or in what circumstances it's possible to do in what not and um, yeah i don't know what conclusions to draw actually <laughs> no i think that was a pretty full and lengthy and beautiful co uh, conclusion actually just the noting of this of this uh, knowing is it it is it and and you can only know by experiencing that for yourself you you cannot yeah you convince can, anyone of yeah. this or uh, yeah you cannot re you can read in books of course you actually can. this is something that uh, christophe uh, your director who was in the embracing the unknown circles he worded it very beautifully he he can uh, he has a very funny way of speaking uh, as in humorous And he said to us, when we were reflecting on the sessions, he said, he looked very serious and he said, we are reinventing the wheel. And all of us were like, oh shit, <laughs> we, we haven't done something new. Uh, and then he continues, he says, and this is very important that we do that. And of course, we all laughed with some uh, relief. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true you know you have to reinvent the wheel yeah all of us all the time yeah and don't be scared to do that and that maybe you uh you know peter brook already did it why should we do it no if you feel the need to give that you know to have that moment or have that experience it's the only way <laughs> yeah to know that's that's the beauty of the theater and the 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 And also the problem, nothing stays. Peter Brook is not dead, but he lives, he's very he's very old, he lives, he does performances still, but he will die. And the performances are dead, because they're not there anymore. Mm -hmm. and every performance dies with the people yep. who did it. Yeah. And, um, yep. and now, yeah, this is... <laughs> I was thinking about that now, um, yeah, Peter Brook is like 90... Yeah. In his 90s, and Grotowski is dead for 20 years now. Yeah. And I was thinking this morning that Grotowski is dead for 20 years, and we can look now also at his texts or at his work, as he must have done with the work of Stanislavski mm -hmm. and Meyerhold mm -hmm. and the sources that he got. Because when he started theater in the 50s and 60s, Meyerhold uh, and Stanislavski were dead more 30 years maybe. So it's interesting, huh? it's yeah, yeah, it's interesting. But it's <laughs> I was uh, on this uh, uh, beautiful podcast, philosophize this, where speaking on uh, Deleuze, 
Have you heard these uh, episodes? No, no. He has five episodes on Deleuze. <laughs> Very beautiful. And um, in one, he con- he, uh, uh, Stefan West, right? I don't know. I don't know the podcast. So I mean, I know the name, but I didn't. Listen. Okay. Anyways, he's describing how uh, uh, Deleuze uh, was reframing what is the purpose of or re-understanding what is the purpose of philosophy is it to know the truth and well that that was obviously for him not not the reason but so why what is the worth of all these thinkers that have thought things that were not true in the end you know what is what is the worth of all that effort all that Mm -hmm. thought Mm -hmm. and he said came to this beautiful conclusion that philosophy is about how might one live, not how should one live, not even how should one act, but how might one live. So it opens the door mm. to like a whole rich universe of uh, of exploration there. And this immediately gives worth to these thoughts and words of all those who came before. Yeah. Yeah. As examples, inspiration yeah. Yeah. that can open your mind, yeah. and that makes it actually worthwhile to think yeah. now. Yeah. In after so many thousands of years of yeah. thought. Yeah, it, it 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 reminds me of a feeling that I had for a long time. That I also Mario Mario Barzaghi, who was here on the show before, mm. he said that the seventies was the golden age of theater. You know. Yeah. And I g- grew up in my professional life. I was in a lot of groups which i thought they passed their golden age already right the it's i'm 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 i was born too late but now i have the feeling krotowski is 20 years dead now time and uh, and also the 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 stupidity of imitating what krotowski did is also gone i think or can be gone mm-hmm. because and we can start to to look at what he did with other people, with a lot of other people, uh, what he did from a new perspective. Yeah. And I feel for myself, for my professional life, a lot of nowness, no? Yes. Being in a present, very interesting present time and being able to confront these old texts, um, yeah, as you said, as an inspiration and not as a duty, not as a. How should one. Act. How not? Yeah, because that was also not in their, in in yes. in their intentions. Or even if it was in their intention, if mm. they thought they was mm. making the final theater, yeah. uh, which in a way we all should have that feeling no? yeah, that we're yeah, doing yeah, this yeah, thing. Yeah. That, and this is uh, also what Deleuze says. Um, uh, you know, even though you know this are hypothesis and uh, throwing uh, an idea out there the fact that you do that if you are in integrity with what you really must do this need Mm. it is still for that moment absolutely true for you Mm. and that's a beautiful knife edge no that that it uh, you are balancing on Yeah. yeah so with that we leave you we leave you, Mariah, and me, and uh, you listeners. Maybe somebody will start to listen again, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, with this delusion turn at the end, uh, um, let's finish here and... Uh, reinvent the wheel. Let's all reinvent the wheel. Kill the masters and reinvent the wheel. That's a, yeah, that's a good point. And uh, so this is, uh, I don't know, the 16th episode now. Yeah, after three months of uh, break. And Very happy to be back. Yeah, me, yeah, bedroom. yeah. And uh, yeah, it will change now, I think, a little bit, the podcast. Also, we are maturing more into this form. And um, yeah, um, I will make my final points. That is, you can... Write to us via uh, email whiteroom at whiteroompot.com 
And uh, you can also recommend us. You can rate us on iTunes. And uh, you can subscribe. subscribe to the podcast, which would be very good. Uh, and you can give us even money if you have now. If you're working again and earning lots of money, you can <laughs> send us so that I can buy equipment or make trips, field trips. Mm -hmm. Ah, and yeah, yeah. So you can you can make you can do this, and um, this would be great. Also to receive your comments, your ideas, your questions, your criticism. Criticism is something which we should talk, which we should talk about yes, also sometimes. Definitely. In this time where I feel that the people are very nice to each other, uh, but not, on twi last. not on Twitter, <laughs> not on Twitter and Facebook, but <laughs> normally we try to be nice to each other. Uh, we try to develop a kind of a culture of speaking also. But sometimes, what is criticism? Criticism is also still important. Uh, we could talk about... Definitely. Some. Also, peri-pandemic. Yeah. It's very interesting, this topic yeah. of criticism. And so, yeah, I mentioned field trips. Uh, this will be a change in the podcast that I'm going to try to make my own little adventure <laughs> without Mariah. What? Um, in uh, five days, in five days, there will start a festival in Dortmund, which is a festival of contemporary theater and dance and uh, performance, which mm. is called Favoriten Festival, which is organized uh, in Dortmund by uh, one of our, uh, let's say, lobby associations of free theater, independent theater, in 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 this part of Germany, and. Um, I asked the organizers of the festival if I could uh, come and watch some of the performances and maybe talk to to the groups or the people, who, the performers who, in some kind of an environment, maybe in the end uh, with the wine or whatever, uh, at the festival. So I will take some kind of uh, equipment with me and I'm going to uh, record conversations there. I'm going to be provided with press tickets. I'm very excited. Oh my God, Simon. <laughs> 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 That's amazing. Nice. And uh, I think this form of uh, field investigations yeah. could also be something cool for the future. Yeah. So with that, we will... I want to go on a field trip to Bali. <laughs> yeah, so, so support us. Support <laughs> the field trip. I want to come along and also my family. <laughs> I mean, I, seriously, I, I was in Bali and I s just thinking of the rehearsals we had with the children here in Schwerke. The children running around sometimes just across the floor screaming or saying, I need some attention or I need food. And I just thought about the film I shot in Bali of the big one of the big gamelans rehearsing, mm -hmm. and it's a family. So they were rehearsing the family compound, mm. and the kids are everywhere. Yeah, they they were rehearsing a, a new dance, a puppet dance. It was quite an intense work, but the kids were like dancing behind with a little bong and doing their own performance. <laughs> they were maybe four years mm. old, mm -hmm. and they were so admissive. Uh, accepting of this energy and it was uh, very inspiring actually yeah. yeah the good old family theater yeah vision. yeah okay all right so we're done for now yes. and uh, we say goodbye 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 ciao <laughs>